Hey guys, welcome to the channel. This is Gen Deer Commando. My name's Ryan and I'm a former Royal Marine from the United Kingdom today. We've got a treat for you all. I'm going to be reacting to some of um, some of my own stuff, guys. The Royal Marines forging the Arctic Commando. This is a fantastic video put together by the Royal Marines. They've got a brilliant team of merry men there making these um, making these videos. So first I want to say thank you to the Royal Marines for creating this content and allowing me to react to it. It's going to be really good, guys, and hopefully I can give you all watching um, a little bit of an insight into the Royal Marines Commandos and what we do and what we specialise in, okay? Because it's um, it's quite good, to say the least, all right? In my humble opinion, the greatest, um, the greatest band of brothers on the planet, okay? And uh, hopefully we can showcase that to you today. Let's go. We know that we train in the, the harshest of environments and we don't stop when the weather gets bad. In order to survive, just to survive, your drills have to be world class. I think the most important thing is survivability. You know, being able to outlast our enemy. Every moment you're in the Arctic, it is trying to hurt you or kill you. I'm so excited for this one guys. This is this is gonna be epic. So training in Norway not only prepares you for battle and operations in the high north, it prepares you for operations all over the world. My early experience was I passed out of recruit training, a few months later went to Norway, then a really hard, arduous Norway, and then the next again winter I was in Afghanistan. So the skills to keep warm to still operate when the conditions are bad. We're all learnt from, from Norway. Uh, if, you don't, if you don't know, guys, about the um, Royal Marines Mountain Leaders, they're, they're considered, you know, the, the, among the best soldiers Great Britain has to offer. Um, I know quite a few people who've went the Mountain Leader route. I know quite a few people who've went Special Forces route. And trust me when I say the Mountain Leaders are in very, very high regard amongst all of the community, including Special Forces, okay? It's an extremely, extremely hard course to pass. Even Royal Marines, you know, as hard as our training is and is equipped, it, it can prepare you for, um, for that sort of, of course. You know, even even a lot of Royal Marines wouldn't be able to do the Mountain Leader card. It's a it's a very very tough arduous course, and only the finest of the Royal Marines um, are, are among those men. All right, it's a it's a fantastic course. They're very very skilled in all war all warfare's, um, especially Arctic warfare. Okay, my um, my section corporal when I first passed out of training um, was was a, um, a mountain leader and what a tough, tough individual he was, okay? Very, very good soldier. Uh, and that's been a real solid foundation to my career in the Royal Marines. If you take the, the worst case scenario, say a peer adversary has taken ground in the High North and three commander brigade as UK defences experts in mountain and cold weather warfare, we'd be sent in first sort of paved the way for the, the remainder of the force. We'd look to hit softer targets, so logistical nodes, small teams that are out and about enabling greater actions for air controllers, drone operators, uh, and, and targets that can be hit that have maximum effect. Now, without shelter, without food, without water, the enemy is severely restricted in this environment. So if we can take out that support to the frontline enemy troops, we're going to be doing a good job. Mm.
So just to add a little bit of meat on the bones to that, they are effectively what most people would understand to be a, a form of reconnaissance, okay, with the ability to disrupt the enemy in um, in within their kind of teams as well. And they, they act in small teams, and to do that in the Arctic, all right, not just survive, but to thrive within that environment and to really thrive as well and, and to actively try and engage in small teams to disrupt the enemy. You've got to be an exceptional soldier. You've got to be, um, you've just got to be an, an exceptional individual within that team. And it's something that not many men can do, okay? Not in the Arctic anyway. We've got a long history with Norway um, in terms of the formation of commandos and some of the very first operations in World War II were conducted uh, up and along the Norwegian coastline. We've been meaningfully training in the Arctic, in Norway, for over half a century. Wow. And it's that sort of collective experience which we see distilled down into our mountain leaders. And it's one of the reasons why we can take people relatively unfamiliar uh, with the Arctic and very quickly train them up to a good standard. So mountain leaders are the UK defence specialists in Arctic and mountain warfare. To operate in the mountains, it takes a, a combination of really extremely difficult skills. So amphibiosity, you've got cliff assault, and reconnaissance. Mm. Now, doing that in the mountains is extremely difficult. Doing it in the Arctic is just as hard, if not harder. Our secondary role to the, the operational side of things is to train the rest of the 3 Commander Brigade in those skills. So, Arctic and mountainous warfare. Yeah, which a lot of people don't realise the Royal Marines are Arctic and warfare, uh, uh, Arctic warfare and mountain specialists. Okay, we we do that pretty much every single year. Okay, and if you've been in the Royal Marines, even if you've been in a short period of time, I guarantee you, you'll have experienced one or the other. You know, um, when I was in there, we did plenty of mountain warfare. All right, whether it was in this country or abroad. Um, the company that I first joined, Delta Company at Forty Commando, we we were. Um, we didn't go to, to, to Norway within that time frame. We went to the jungle in Gabon, but there was a lot of lads within that company who had been um, to Norway. And the skills, believe it or not, that you can learn in Norway do translate across the whole board. So don't think that if you're going to go to Norway that those skills are redundant to that area. You can utilise some of the skills, soldiering-wise, anywhere in the world, OK? Because, let's face it, if you can soldier effectively, in the Arctic, you can soldier anywhere on the planet. It's all about personal administration. If you can admin yourself within the Arctic, you can admin yourself anywhere, guys. And uh, hopefully we'll see a bit of that in the uh, next few minutes of this. Ultimately, right, it's only you, now that you're in that situation, that's gonna get yourself out of it. By being proactive, being in a non permissive environment, which is the way we should be thinking, putting as much distance between you. I heard a few lads uh, back on camp talking about how arduous Norway is. I've enjoyed the whole course, I'll be honest. Some lads will think a lot differently. Yeah. Look at Some that. Some lads man. have never skied in their lives. It's the first time they've put skis on. That in itself is a challenge. And then as soon as you add a weapon system, your battle kit, and also a Bergen to that, it starts getting really, really difficult. Mm. So there's many dangers that come with working in a cold weather environment, particularly Norway. The rate of cold weather injuries, if you're untrained, would be extremely high. You just need to look back at previous wars and large chunks of forces were 
brought to the knees through just cold weather injuries alone, through yeah. maybe a, a lack of food, which would then cause a lack of energy in the body and then hypothermia. Uh, hypothermia goes hand in hand with frostbite. Operating out here, it's not only the, the snow and the cold, it's the mountainous environment. Mm. All this is conducive to, to bring in a, a force that is normally operable all over the world to absolutely inoperable if, if they're on train. There's a few different types of shelter we can use. The first one, if you're in the tree line, is a brushwood shelter. They're quite time consuming to build. So like a, a lean-to using branches and wood, uh, stuff to insulate from the ground, block the wind. The other one is a, a Quincy. So if you've not got that much snow, you could pile up snow in a big mound, flatten it all down and dig into it. And it's essentially a snow shelter. Mm. I tend to use and, and teach as much as possible either a snow cave, so digging into a sort of heavy snow bank, it's minimal, minimal hours to construct, minimal effort, but you're out of the elements, totally out of the elements. The temperature outside could be minus, minus 20, but inside with a, with a candle on and maybe a four-man team to, to heat the inside space with a candle, you're looking at about zero degrees. Wow. So that's a phenomenal difference just off being able to understand the environment. Okay, training is everything. You can be the best soldiers on the planet, but if you're not trained within a, sp a specific area, i.e. the Arctic, then, you know, you're going to die pretty quick. And a lot of my viewers from Sweden will be able to uh, they'll be able to understand where I'm coming from with that because the environment in which they work in, you know, you know, your summers are very hot, but your winters are very cold. And a lot of the soldiers who comment on the channel from Sweden are quite used to that environment. And it's an it's a environment that you have to show absolute respect for. And when I was in the Royal Marines, you know, the, the hammered at home, the environment is probably your number one enemy, all right, if you don't know how to operate in it. You can forget about the, the human element of the enemy. If you're not equipped with the right kit and mindset and knowledge of the environment in which you're in, then the environment will probably get you first, guys. It's as simple as that. For Royal Marine Commandos, Norway is in our blood in that respect. It's always been one of those almost rites of passage rightly or wrongly. Um, you know, there are some instances where you probably don't feel like a real bootneck until you've done a Norway. So the icebreaker drills, I mean, th that's a thing that everyone really affiliates to, to Norway in general, jumping in that, that ice cold water uh, and getting the shock of your life. <laughs> so if somebody's went through the ice, they, they have a number of effects that, that happen. So cold shock is when the body first experiences unexpected uh, extreme cold water all over the body. Mm. If they're in there for a long time, then that's when it becomes really dangerous. The chances of hypothermia after a few minutes of in there are increased greatly. If there's a high wind, that is also a massive concern for us because yeah. by convection, the body is cooled rapidly. Once you're able to survive, that is a good start. If you can't manoeuvre out here, it seriously hinders the, the output that you can have. So we like to concentrate a large chunk of our training towards mobility. It's won wars in the past, you know, with the Finnish looking at their winter war back in the 40s. Yeah. And, you know, going back thousands of years, it's always been mobility that's the issue. I've been skiing a few times. It does differ quite considerably. So I was quite confident coming out here. I was quickly, I quickly realised how much more difficult it is during, you know, over this cross country terrain. The, the nature of the Norwegian coastline is quite unique. There's a lot of places that we can secretly access this high north. From the, from the coastline, a lot of hidden places. But we do need specialists to, mm. to recce those areas prior to going in. So the shore reconnaissance teams of SRS, they do the, the beach recce prior to anyone else. So SRS are the, 
their surveillance and reconnaissance squadron. So they're the forefront of three commander brigade. Essentially, the, the so SRS have formed. Um, basically, they they manned by mountain leaders predominantly as well, guys. Just because of that initial skill set within the Arctic, okay, and not just the initial skill set within the Arctic. It's the higher level of, of of extra training that these mountain leaders go through. The training is extremely hard and vigorous, all right. And 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 they've got they've got all of these extra skills, and they've honed on their soldiering skills a lot more than a regular marine, okay. And uh, I think that's why the SRS are so effective in what they do. They've got a team of extremely trained individuals. The eyes and ears of the brigade. Again, filled predominantly with mountain leaders. There you go. They're the sort of pointiest end of the stick when it comes to three command brigade. For the United Kingdom, Norway is our closest Arctic partner mm -hmm. and whilst that interest has perhaps waxed and waned whilst other events have been occurring there's little doubt now with the northern sea route beginning to open up and what we're seeing is increased competition perhaps starting to emerge around the Arctic really our role is to help ensure that those threats do not materialize by being able to show the role the United Kingdom would play if those threats were to start to become manifest. Mm. So we definitely go heavy on the on the fight phase because that's where the real difficulties are encountered and that's where the, the development and experiences has gained the most. We had already done two weeks uh, skiing and getting ourselves prepped for the final phase. It was just a little bit more difficult than putting all your tactical responsibilities, incorporating that into the, the basic stuff that you learned prior. So the idea in a future conflict of small, agile commando teams at reach causing absolute mayhem will force them to deal with the problem, one way or another. Absolutely awesome. <laughs> this is awesome, man. These smaller teams will be able to blend into that background, cause the damage and evaporate again. And that for me, as a commando, is a genuinely exciting prospect. Mm. Well, troops, that is forging the arctic commando by the royal marines their link will be in the description please go and give them a follow show a bit of support on that channel um they've got fantastic content and i'm going to be reacting to a lot more of their content very very soon some exciting news as well guys coming up but please like share and subscribe if you enjoyed that that's a very small snippet of what we do in the royal marines but Every small snippet we do tends to be of a specialist nature, so that's why you've got a very, very specialist soldier capable of deploying via land, sea, and more recently, air. 
anywhere in the world and i'm proud to have earned the green beret you won't be able to see it because of the green screen well actually you can and um yeah thanks for watching guys if you enjoyed this drop a comment below and i'll see you in the next one